back to Knitting in Paradise. This is my podcast uh, all about mostly knitting, um, but as of late it has also become about sewing and cross-stitching and it's about to become about uh, embroidery as well. Um, one thing about this whole COVID-19 quarantine business, I picked up a couple of new crafts and um, I'm not sorry. Um, but uh, yes, my name is Heather, and if you're returning, welcome back and thank you for your support. If you are new to the podcast, um, welcome, and I hope you find something that you enjoy and like. Um, if you do, I hope you stick around. Um, I will talk about some finished objects, some finished objects that are going to become some a frogged object, unfortunately. Uh, I'll talk a little bit about sewing, uh, a little bit about cross stitch, and, um, and yeah, I think that's about it. And um, so I hope everybody's doing well. Um, I think, I mean, what do I know? But I think we're over the hump um, as far as the worst of it. I don't think um, we're going to get back to normal anytime soon. Um, sorry about the air quotes. What the hell? Um, but anyways, um, but I hope people who have, um, oh my gosh, it's so hard to address this issue because so many people have experienced this, um, pandemic in a variety of ways. There are people who have lost their jobs. There are people who, um, who life didn't change much, uh, um, but for everybody, I hope everybody is healthy. I hope your family's healthy. Um, and let's get just right into it, shall we? Because I am not using my words very well today. Oh, not using my words. Well, let's, gosh, let's record a podcast. What else is there to do? Anyways, um, let's start with what I'm wearing. So this is my first finished object. And uh, you're probably pretty familiar with this. Um, this is the Cipilla or Cipilla. I'm not sure how to say it, but I'm going to call it the Cipilla. Uh, and it's by Caitlin Hunter. And it is the first, yes, the first of her patterns. I had picked, I think I've purchased four of her patterns. She had a special a few months back where if you bought three, you get the fourth one for free. So... Who am I to say no to that? And I love her patterns. And I'm not a huge, um, like, color work fan uh, until I saw her patterns. So, anyways, um, this is one of them. And as I spoke about in a previous episode, um, when I went to Vogue Knitting Live in January, um, remember those, like, group functions you can go to where there were tons of people and you could, like, mingle and stuff? Remember the good old days? Anyways, yes, Vogue Knitting Live in January, I went with a plan. Um, and I went with the uh, plan of just buying the yarn for three specific patterns. And they were three of the patterns that, that I got from Caitlin Hunter. It was the Cipolla, uh, the Soldatna Crop, because I, I'm pretty sure I'm the last knitter in the world to knit the Soldatna Crop. And, and um, uh, the Novelli. So anyways, I finished the Cipolla and I love it. And let me just stand up. I'll cut off my head a little bit. There's not much to see at the bottom. Just a little ribbing down at the bottom, but you can see that the color work, of course, matches down the sleeves. My sleeves are a little long. I don't mind, obviously, when it's freezing cold. Um, I don't mind, but what I think I'm going to do is I actually might rip back, um, take a little bit of this part out and bring the sleeves up just a little bit. I mean, I don't mind my sleeves going right to about here, but that's a little bit much. Um, it's just it's just the way they blo it blocked. Um, obviously, had I known they were going to be that long, I, I don't know. I probably maybe I would have made adjustment. I don't know, but um, I absolutely love it. I think I think this turned out really nice. This is really pretty. Um, I ended up. It won't be that much of a deal to take this part out, even though this part looks more, 
like more of the complicated uh, color work. This part was actually a lot easier and went a lot faster than this part because there was a lot of um, float catching here. And um, and I didn't do a very good job. It's a little bit tighter than, I mean, it doesn't look on camera like it is, but there is a little bit of tension here um, that I'm not terribly happy with. So I might, if I get a wild hair, I might go back, take about half of it back and then just re redo this. I don't know, we'll see. The yarn is delicious. This I used um, Barnyard, Barn, is it Barnyard? Pretty sure it's Barnyard. Barnyard yarns. Um, I used Cashmere is the light color. It's just a really, really pretty speckle. Um, and then uh, for the dark, the brown, that's uh, Campfire. So I think it, it looks very, very similar to what Caitlin used in her pattern um, for the picture, uh, which I thought was is beautiful and very wintry looking, and so that's what I went with. And it's super soft, um, and I am really happy with the finished project. Um, so, yes, the Cipola. Um, not much else I can say about it. I think this was my first color work pattern. I did, um, I'm pretty pleased with, you know, how I did the floats. It fits perfectly up here. I don't know why. Probably because there wasn't a whole lot of float catching here. Um, which is the key, I think, to color work, to for it to fit per properly. I didn't go down and or go up a needle size or anything like that. It's just a matter of, you know, loosely knitting, I guess. Um, so I'm really happy with the fit up here. Just super. I love this sweater. It's really. I can't wait. And it's funny because I finished it. I think maybe, I don't know, a month ago or so. And I thought, well, I'm not going to be able to wear this until next um season or the next time it gets cold but I live in Connecticut if I didn't mention that before I'm coming to you from Colchester Connecticut which is a very small town about 40 minutes east of Hartford um anyways in northeastern weather you can have 80 degrees one day you know we had the fault there goes the air quotes again what's happening um you have the false uh, winters where, or the false summer, false seasons, whatever you want to call it, where you think you are heading into the next season and then the next day it goes, it reverts, it regresses back to the season before. So I've actually gotten to wear this sweater, uh, I think twice now, um, in May, when it's supposed to be nice and warm, which we had some warm, day, warm days, but... Anyways, I've gotten to wear it a couple of times, which I'm pretty happy with. But I'm I'm I'll I'm excited to wear it a lot come fall. Um, and I say fall because this um, it's a super wash yarn, so um, it's not as wooly as like a non super wash. So it's it's um, I'll probably have to wear something under it to really really have a warm sweater. Um, but as far as like somewhere between in the 50s and the 60s, I can wear this and be comfortable. But I love it. It's super soft. It's I think it's beautiful. I had never before I was a knitter. I was never really attracted to like the Nordic look of color work. But I think this is beautiful. Anyways, so there's that finished object. I'm going to take a sip of my tea. I am drinking tea because I've already had my coffee for the morning. I'm usually a coffee drinker, especially in the morning. Um, but it's midday now and so I switched to tea mostly because my throat gets a little dry when I podcast. Excuse me while I sip. And this is David's tea and this is, uh, I believe it's called Snow Day and it's lovely. It's a green tea. And it's got hints of clove and cinnamon. It's delicious. <clears throat> Starbucks mug, sorry. I am a victim to the man. <gasps> There's air quotes, air quotes sneaking in again. I have got, I wonder, oh my gosh, I wonder if I do that a bunch in real life and I don't even realize it. When you're recording yourself and you see yourself on this giant screen right here, you're a little bit more conscious of your ticks and mannerisms and everything and I'm horrified 
to realize how often I use air quotes. Anyway. I love this mug. I think it's just beautiful. I wish they didn't have to announce their presence there, but it is what it is. Um, I think it's super pretty. And I love the handle because all four of my fingers fit. That's key. You gotta be able to grip your, your mug. Anyway, enough about that. And look at, isn't this the cutest thing ever? So this is my little thingy, tea thingy. You put the tea right in there and then it steeps and then you got your little holder when you take it out. And of course, a llama. Um, yeah, I could probably play with any, whatever. Um, <laughs> let's move on to um, another finished object. I did, um, you may be familiar with Barbara from Knitting I Love. Um, I'm not going to try to say her last name because I'll butcher it. Hi, Barbara. Uh, she sent out a call for um, test knitting her new sock pattern, and which uh, I decided to do, and it was super fun, and she's a lovely, lovely human being. You might be familiar with her um, full of Minnie's hat, which is adorable, um, which I had pattern, and... I think uh, when I started it, I start, attempted it, it was a little above my skill level as far as how the construction is. I think I could do it now, which I will do it, because it's a darling hat. I might pop in a picture here. Um, super cute, you might already be familiar. But anyway, she's the designer behind that hat, and she came out with a sock pattern, and I decided to test knit for her. And they are called Garden Seed Socks. Yes, garden seed socks and I'll show you and they're adorable. Here they are. Sorry about the wrinkles and maybe any dog hair you might see because I blocked them and then I wore them and then I didn't have time to wash them before I decided to record. So, but anyways, um, super cute pattern. A couple of different repeats here. Um, which is mostly a slip stitch um, and then so yeah I think this is called what mosaic knitting I think anyway super easy intuitive pattern um, super cute end product um, I used I used um, Maria Tuscan Tuscan knits yarn for the the light color um, and here's her Super duper cute. This is her Bracken base, which is 75% uh, Superwash Blue Face Lester, 25% Nylon, a fingering weight yarn, and this is Cordelia. Really, really beautiful um, speckly yarn. Um, and then the dark color is Cascade Heritage uh, in Sapphire, and it's been in my stash forever. So, really fun pattern to do, um, super cute socks, um, so check them out. So, so those, and let's see, um, the only, oh, um, so I have a finished object, object that I finished, I want to say it was last summer that I finished, and I haven't talked about it yet. Because I've had mixed feelings. I loved it at first. I love the pattern. But as far as my finished object, um, I love it, but I don't love it. Let's talk about it. So I did what many, 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 many people have done. I did the Comfort Fade Cardi by Andrea Mowry, who is a genius designer. And all of her stuff is beautiful. I have the Weekender in my queue, which I will do eventually. Um, I'll show you this. I'll pop in a picture of me wearing it because, of course, it does it justice. And I'm not going to just put it on right now over, put a sweater over a sweater. But anyway, uh, the pattern itself is super simple, um, fun to do. 
I was I would be considered a I guess advanced beginner at the time that I I did this and I had no problems at all with the pattern very clearly written um, I would totally do another one as in fact that's the point of why I'm sharing this I will probably do another one um, so here are my colors that I did and as you can tell as being the beginner that I was when I started these aren't ideal colors to do a fade this one definitely because it's the very you want to use the variegated so that they'll kind of blend into the other ones I don't recommend using solids I'm, I'm sure there are many of you out there saying duh don't want to use solids for a fade I mean I suppose you could but not not solids that are so different than say you know the this plum color and this color anyway I love this yarn it's Plymouth yarns I love the colors um, but I don't like it in this project as much so I actually might frog this whole thing and do another one using I probably will still use this um, and then some versions of more variegated versions of these other colors because I really do love the colors they just don't fade well as you can see um, anyways these are like I said they're all plum this is straw uh, this is mystic purple this one is honeydew and this one is rose violet and if I'm not mistaken I think honeydew I might be wrong honeydew I think is discontinued I ended up finding when I had to get more because I ran out I had to go to the wool warehouse to get some I don't think it's available on the Plymouth website anymore <clears throat> but anyways I love the sweater I really do and then, and then the other reason too is um, uh, I think I knitted a little bit too big I mean for cardigans you can kind of go a little big but I think for my next one I would want it a little bit more snug so it's a lot of knitting that's a lot of yarn but you know if you're gonna put that much work into something you want to be you know and I did wear it a lot at first but I think I'll wear it even more if I don't know you know you know what I'm saying I want to I want to love 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 it I think when I first finished it I was just so pleased with myself that I finished it this I mean it's a pretty big project um I think I was more more ecstatic with the accomplishment than I was with the actual object so so the honeymoon you know is a little bit over with this guy so yeah I'm probably gonna frog that and re-knit it with something with other colors so that's it um oh I was gonna say that's it for the knitting it's not it for the knitting I have one whip I have one work in progress uh, for knitting and it's for pride month yay June 2020 pride month um, and I discovered uh, I don't really have sections in my podcast I kind of am I kind of mix my sections so uh, my whip has to do with um, a new podcast that I found that I really enjoy it's Abigail of covert knits um, and everything I talk about I will put down in the doodly do uh, I'll link so I'll link Abigail's podcast down there as well anyways she is hosting a she's a new podcaster she's got like I think 10 episodes and I binge watched all of them in an afternoon maybe two afternoons but still I just really enjoyed you know, there's nothing fancy about her podcast or anything. She doesn't put any kind of song and dance on. She's very straightforward. She's she's enjoyable to listen to. It's like someone you can sit across the table and have coffee with. Um, and she just she's very straightforward and she shares what she loves. She loves rainbows um, and she loves to knit. And she is hosting a, uh, a knit along for Pride, and um, which she feels very strongly about, and as do I. And I decided to join along and she I will put the hashtag across it is a uh, hashtag pride sockathon 2020 
and basically any rainbow, anything that you think is a rainbow, might not look like the traditional, really, traditional rainbow, um, uh, but if you think it's uh, as a rainbow, then then cast on a pair of socks for uh, from June 1st to June 30th. Um, whips count if you're not, you know, being an a-hole about it and have d a decent amount to knit during Pride Month. Um, anyways, and you hashtag the Pride Sockathon 2020, and you're automatically entered to win a prize. So, which she will draw, I believe she said on July 1st. Um, it's for a good cause. She does it a little bit differently. Um, she knits as many uh, pride themed socks or rainbow socks uh, as she can for the, in the month of June. And for every finished pair of socks, she donate, donates $25 to um, her cause, uh, which is the Trevor Project, um, which I'll also link down below. She um, donates $25 um, for every pair of socks she finishes, finishes in June to the Trevor Project, um, which is which provides a, a life-saving services for the LGBTQ community. Um, so uh, you can do that, but you don't have to do that. That's what she does. Um, and I think that's a great inspiration to get other people to um, join in the cause and to join in the knit along. Um, at the very least, you you know post on a hashtag, other people see it, and who knows who you might inspire. So, anyways, um, I cast on my. Here's my rainbow. That's pretty rainbowy. That's my heel. That's really the only, I went stash diving. Basically, this was a set, uh, a yarn set that my husband got me for a mystery knit along several months ago. Um, and this is a Brew City, Brew City Yarns. This is their, um, the, and this is the, the cake, huge cake. This is their Goblet of Fire. Oops. Um, that's their Goblet of Fire, and then it came with, uh, Niffity, Niffity Black, I might be wrong on that. Um, but they put out a mystery, they had a mystery cow, um, that had these two yarns for a Brio shawl. Um, and I'm not a huge shawl wearer, and so it's kind of sat in my stash, and it was really the only rainbow thing that I had and it's really I'm loving how it's knitting up I didn't realize it was going to um, be so be so stripey it's pretty neat uh, so pretty happy with these I'm just doing a shorty sock this is basically whenever I knit socks I use the same um, pattern and kind of a mix of patterns but mostly this is the uh, Espresso Shot Shorty Socks. Um, I'll put uh, the name and the design. I can't remember the name, the designer's name, um, but I'll put that up on the screen. And they're shorty, obviously they're shorty socks. It's a two by two rib for like 20 rows. And then you do 10 rows of stockinette. I put in a waist yarn for the heel. Then I work a couple of inches of foot in basic stock, stockinette. Then I'll go back and put in my heel. Um, and that way I can easily measure um, when I'm going to put start my toe. Um, so I'm doing these on size zeros on my Chow Goos, which I love. They're my favorite sock knitting needles. I love the, they're the twist lace needles. Um, the cord is super non-memory, easy to work with. Um, I don't think I've used the zeros before. Uh, and the yarn is lovely, a little stretchy. It is a, it's 80% superwash merino, 20% nylon. Um, and so yeah, Pride, Pride Sockathon 2020, Abigail of Covert Knits. And that's my only knitting on the needles right now. Um, so that's it for the knitting. 
Hi everybody, I just want to pop in this quick um, video because there was a little bit of delay from when I originally podcasted to when I po uh, edited and published and in that time um, I finished my Pride Sockathon socks. So I just wanted to pop them in and show you because they are wonderful and glorious and I love them. And sorry about the lighting, the lighting really is not great. But here they are in all their glory. Yeah, that's a pretty decent representation of my little espresso shot shorty pattern. Uh, Brew City yarns, uh, Goblet of Fire and Niffler Black, and then the Pride Rainbow. But June is Pride Month, so here are my Pride socks for um, Covert Knits. Pride Sockathon 2020, and I'll put the little hashtag down here. So anyways, just wanted to pop this in here. And if you just came for the knitting, thank you for stopping by. Um, and um, I hope to see you next time. But if you decide to stick around for some a little bit of cross-stitching, a little bit of sewing, um, that's what's next. And I have my very first garment sewed finished object um, and that'll require a costume change so excuse me for just one second boom <sighs> okay so this is my first garment that I sewed um, and I'm pretty happy with it it's not perfect obviously um, you know mistakes were made uh, but I mean so this is the Gathered Shoulder Tunic by Pearl Soho. It's a free pattern. I highly recommend it. It's actually, I mean, do I recommend it for your first garment? It was a little bit ambitious just because of, um, like, well, this detail. I don't think this is for beginners. I mean, maybe advanced beginner sewists. But the, the, the pattern as a whole is a pretty simple because it's basically... Um, four equal shape and size rectangles that are sewn together with a little V, a V neck in the front, a very small V in the back. Um, I'll stand up for you so you can see the whole thing. Sorry. So it's tunic. Got a little split side there, which I love. It's got a little V in the back, which I also love. And, um, you know, it's a cute little, very casual, very comfy, uh, very versatile piece. So I can wear this with jeans, I can wear it with a skirt, I can wear it with leggings. Um, yeah, I love it. I use Pearl Soho fabric as well, which this is their, uh, I wanna say their watercolor linen in pale lichen um and yeah it was fairly easy when i first did it i i did it way too big so i ended up having to rip out seams cut and redo it which was i mean i think it's just kind of the nature of sewing so i'm super happy with the with the finished project and you know you got these, I, I'm pretty sure I did something wrong because I think you're supposed to be able to see um, some some of the sewed stitches on the outside of this. I can't, I haven't quite figured out what I did wrong. I don't think it's like, um, you know, obviously you don't need to see them, but I think it's a nice detail to be able to see, especially if you use like a little bit of contrasting um, thread which I did a little bit. I used like a yellow thread and this light, you're not really getting a good representation of the, the fabric. It's a really, really pretty fabric. I may, might pop in a picture that will show the fabric in detail because there's like some yellow, like tweedy detail in the fabric. Um, and it's, really blown out. It's a nice pale green. You really can't tell in this light, which sucks, but maybe I'll pop in some pictures. Anyways, the fabric is um, a linen, which was is very reasonably priced, I think, on their website. Um, the pattern is free, which can't beat that. 
I'll probably make another one. I probably want to make one for my mom because she really liked, I think, the top. And I think this is her style all the way. Um, and I already bought fabric, so I'll make another one. And it's easy, so, you know. So, yeah, my first sewn gar garment. Yay me. Um, don't think I have anything else to say about that. Um, what else? Oh, so... Uh, the next finished so well the next finished object is it has to do with sewing and cross stitch and um, I was gonna say Selena stop right now but I think I'm gonna wait until you get this before I publish the video so you can keep watching if if you're even watching anyway so I know um, if you saw my previous episode, I made a cross stitch of owls, um, this really cute cross stitch picture, and then um, tinymodernist.com uh, has a really cool tutorial. Excuse me. <clears throat> has a really cute tutorial on how to put your cross stitch finished objects onto a pillow. Um, which I did for my mom and I shared on a previous episode. Well, my friend Selena, who I've known for years and years, who I adore, she lost <clears throat> her best friend Bosco, who went to the Rainbow Bridge um, just a few weeks ago and it was devastating. Um, she, Bosco, she had Bosco for 15 years and it was kind of sudden, even though he was an old man he, it still was sudden and of course it's just always devastating even when it's not sudden and anyways um and so I wanted to do something special for her and um and I wanted to find a cross stitch pattern that represented Bosco and it's crazy I don't know how I got this lucky but I'm scrolling I think Pinterest looking for cross stitch patterns um, and I came across this cross stitch pattern that was not, I don't even know who the designer was. It's just, it was one of those random pictures that have come up, um, when you look for like, I want to say he's a Springer Spaniel, um, but a, or Springer Spaniel mix or something like that. And it's this pattern that came up random. And when I saw it, I was just flabbergasted because I immediately saw Bosco's face. Um, I'll put up a picture of Bosco. Um, and then, so I did the cross stitch pattern and anyways, without further ado, look at this. Oh my God. I love how it turned out so much. So hopefully uh, maybe I'll put in a picture of Bosco right here. The only difference is I wish I had done his eyes a little bit darker. However, I think with all the gray and the black in, in the fur, I think his eyes would have been lost. In this pattern so I'm kind of glad I did the light eyes but that's the only thing that isn't truly a match for Bosco um, but other than that I mean and then Selena always called him the best good dog or the best good boy so yeah, I'm super happy with this and then of course this pattern um, is by tiny modernist as far as putting it into a pillow super easy Super great way, I think, to to use your cross stitch finished objects. I mean, I think a lot of us put them in frames or keep them in the hoop and hang them, which is great, but people only have so much wall space, you know? So I think a pillow is a great um, way to use your cross stitch patterns. And oh my God, I love it so much. Uh, so yeah. yeah. Um, this one was a labor of love, even though I was super happy to do it. Obviously, I was super excited the whole time. I mean, from, from the moment I saw the pattern and saw, oh my God, that's Bosco, super excited to do it. But here's the thing. Like I said, I don't even know who the designer is. I've looked and looked and I, I just, I don't know who the designer is. And, and because of that, um, there wasn't a, uh, a color, a thread legend. So basically with the exception of the eyes it's black white and about and I'm not kidding you 10 shades of gray in this thing and so I went to the fabric store and I got all the shades of gray that they had um and I en actually ended up 
having to mix and match some of the shades, like using one thread from one and another thread from another to get a different shade uh, to use. And I just, I love how there's shading. I've never done a cross stitch pattern like this where there's like shading and contrast and, you know, it's like three dimensional, which I really turned out great. And of course I owe that all to the designer um, of this, but I had to determine I had to ba basically make my own legend as far as what colors went where. Um, so that was a process, um, but it worked and I'm super happy. So um, yay, I can't wait th to get this to her. Um, I think she's gonna love it and I think she's gonna ugly cry and <laughs> uh, sorry, not sorry, but you know. Anyway, uh, I should have shown, shown the other cross stitch finished object that I did. Um, I basically got this for my husband because he loves turtles. Um, but to show this after I show that, it's like meh, but it's cute. This is just something I finished. And this is just a Riolis uh, pattern. Um, and I used the colors that it came with. It was just something that I felt like cross stitching. I thought it was cute and I decided to put it together. I'm probably just gonna put it in a frame or maybe I'll pull it, put it on a pillow and just keep it in my craft room. But Super duper cute. Anyway, not as complex as the other one, but it's a finished object. So that's pretty much it as far as finished objects, works in progress of my crafts. Um, the only other thing I really want to talk about is um, the things other than crafting, um, what I'm super passionate about is uh, books and reading. And I have discovered a new genre of books. Um, I've been an avid reader my entire life and I owe that all to my mom because my mom's been an avid reader all her life. Um, since I picked up knitting a couple of years ago, my reading has kind of decreased. I used to be a prolific reader. Um, not as much anymore, but I always do have one or two books on the go. Um, one right before bedtime, and I listen to audiobooks, which is great. Um, sometimes I'll listen to audiobooks while I knit, which is the best of both worlds. Anyways, um, I discovered, and this is through my husband, uh, graphic novels, which I used to just call comic books. Well, graphic novels are way, way more than just a comic book. I can't remember how I discovered my very first graphic novel that I read, but I fell in love. Um, I'll pop in a picture of the cover. It's called Brazen, Rebel Ladies Who Rocked the World. Uh, it's by Penelope Bajo, I believe is how she... she she says her name. I apologize, Penelope, if I did not say that correctly. Um, but anyways, it's a graphic novel about famous women who have made a difference in the world somehow or another. Um, examples, Josephine Baker is in it, um, uh, Temple Grandin, um, Nellie Bly, uh, and basically there's they're like short vignettes um, about each of these women and, you know, where they're from. Um, uh, briefly their upbringing, how they got into whatever it is that led them to do the thing that changed the world. Um, really, and, and there's humor inserted in there and just fascinating. I highly recommend it to anybody, specifically women and little girls, um, but to anybody. It's such a great read and it basically has led me to want to read more and more graphic novels. Now obviously there's graphic novels that I probably wouldn't be too into, but it's opened my, opened a door for me as far as another genre of books that I would have never gravitated towards. And it led me to the graphic novel section of the bookstore, which I have never ever browsed before. And I found recently a gem I can't remember if I've mentioned before that, you know, my, you know, everybody has their all time favorite book. A lot of people like Wuthering Heights or whatever. Well, mine is To Kill a Mockingbird. Um, I've read it many times. I 
reread it probably every two to three years. Um, I have the 30th, 25th, 30th, I can't remember which edition, anniversary edition. Um, I also have a, an edition I found when I went to Italy with my friend Selena. Um, so it's all in Italian. I don't read Italian, but it's my favorite book in Italian. So of course I had to have it. Well then the other day, a couple weeks ago, um, when I was browsing the graphic novel section of the bookstore, I found, oh, what? What? Oh my gosh. I can't wait to get into this. I, uh, and it's, uh, just, I mean, it's a novel, but with pictures. I, oh, I can't wait. I, and I love that I have this in my library. I am, uh, so just FYI. Anyway, I just wanted to share because I'm super excited about it. And I don't know what I'm waiting for. I think, I don't know. I'm like, wait, I'm excited to read it, but I'm like holding off for that special moment. I don't know. But it'll be soon. Anyway, so I just wanted to share that with you. Um, other than that, other news, I have gone back to work. Um, I can't remember if I brought it up in a previous episode. I'm very fortunate. I'm an esthetician by trade. Um, which is a fancy word for skincare, um, mostly waxing. And I have my own salon here in town. And um, obviously those were shut down. Um, but I'm very fortunate that when we moved back here to Connecticut from Guam, I reopened my shop and I had to kind of reestablish my clientele. And so I had to do something in the meantime for an income while I did that. And so I've been working part time at a... Um, um at a well-known coffee shop that shall remain nameless. <clears throat> and thank God for that job because I, even though I chose to not, I forget when, I think it was like right when it started to get bad, um, I want to say it was like right around March 18th, March 19th, where I decided, you know, I wasn't going to continue going to work until, you know, more was known and, you know, what my, what was safe and what was not safe. And so one day I went in and I told my manager, I said, you know, I'm not coming back until, you know, more is known, until this blows over or whatever. Um, and I was super, super fortunate because, uh, the corporation offered um, to anybody, they stayed open the entire time, which I don't really agree with, but uh, they offered employees who chose not to go to work during that time um, six weeks of catastrophe pay. So um, I'm super, super fortunate that I was able to have an income while I didn't work. If I didn't have that job, I wouldn't have had any income whatsoever. Um, being a salon owner so but I'm back to work uh, and I've started seeing clients again so I'm super excited about that um, uh, and um, and it's so it's so funny because I chose to go back to work you know I thought I was ready to retire and not work anymore I'm not I I like being in the workforce right now um, for a little while longer. I like the uh, mingling with the public. Um, so I'm super happy to be back to work. I'm super fortunate that I'm able to go back to work. Um, I don't take that for granted. I know there's a lot of people out there who can't say that. Um, so I, I definitely don't take that for granted. I'm super happy about that. Uh, other than that, everything is... Nothing else to report. Um, I, that's all I got. Um, I hope you enjoyed this episode. I hope you're enjoying this podcast. Um, 
you know, as long as I continue to get even the few views that I've gotten so far, I, I'll continue because, they, you know, I, I'm i not for everybody, but, the, you know, if there's a few people out there who enjoy the content, then I'll continue to record. Um, I haven't asked this before because I never want to, I don't know, solicit this kind of thing, but I guess it's the thing to do when you're a podcaster if you want to get your episodes seen by more people. Um, if you liked the content, if you liked the episode, please uh, hit that like button that's right down there somewhere. doesn't cost you anything. You don't get any kind of spam or any kind of, you know, unwanted emails or any anything like that. Um, just hit that like button. Um, if you do hit the subscribe button, the only thing that happens is you get a notification when I re-record and publish a new episode. So, but that's helpful also. The more, you know, the more subscribers I have, the more my videos will pop up if someone does a search for knitting podcast. So, um, if you decide to do that, I really, really appreciate it. Totally not required. Um, but that's all I have for you. <clears throat> I hope everybody is happy and healthy. I hope, uh, you're doing what you love. And um, be kind to each other. Don't be an asshole. Bye. Oh, and if you want to follow me on Instagram or Ravelry, here's where you can find me.